the Dollmaker's Curse. On the edge of a quiet town, there stood an old doll shop untouched by time. Its windows, clouded with dust, barely revealed the eerie figures inside. Dolls of all shapes and sizes crowded the shelves, their glassy eyes forever open, watching. Locals spoke in whispers about the shop's owner, a reclusive doll maker named Mr. Silas, who hadn't been seen for years. One autumn evening, Emily, a young woman new to town, wandered into the shop. The bell above the door let out a hollow chime as she stepped inside. The air was thick with the scent of wood and varnish, and the stillness unnerved her. Hello? Emily called out, but no one answered. As she moved deeper into the store, the dolls seemed to shift in the dim light, their eyes following her. At the back of the shop, she found a strange doll, unlike the others. Its face was eerily lifelike, its skin a pale porcelain that seemed almost warm. She picked it up, curious. Suddenly, a voice rasped from behind her. That one belongs to you now. Startled, Emily spun around to see an old man, frail and gaunt, standing in the shadows. His eyes, sunken and tired, bored into hers. Before she could respond, the man vanished, leaving only silence behind. Panic rose in her chest, and she hurried to leave, but the door wouldn't budge. Frantic, she turned to the dolls, only to see their positions had changed. They were all facing her, arms outstretched as if reaching. The one in her hands was the worst. Its eyes glowed with a sinister light, and its lips moved silently. Then, in a whisper that sent chills down her spine, it said, Now you're part of the collection. Emily's scream echoed through the empty shop, but no one ever heard it. The next day, the shop remained just as it had always been, silent, still, and filled with dolls. Except now there was one more, a doll with lifelike eyes, her face frozen in horror sitting on the highest shelf. Late one night, Emma found a dusty spellbook in her grandmother's attic, filled with ancient incantations. Flipping through, she spotted a spell for unveiling hidden truths. Skeptical but intrigued, she whispered the strange words. At first, nothing happened. Then, her reflection in the nearby mirror began to distort. Emma watched in horror as her face twisted, revealing a gaunt, hollow-eyed version of herself. The reflection moved independently, smiling wickedly. Suddenly, it stepped out of the mirror. Emma backed away, but it lunged, grabbing her arm with cold, vice-like fingers. She screamed as the doppelganger began to merge with her, whispering, now, I am real. When the merging was complete, Emma was gone. The reflection had taken her place. Late one stormy night, Marcus discovered an ancient book hidden in his attic. Inside was a diagram of a pentagram, detailed with cryptic symbols and instructions. Curiosity pushed him to draw it on his floor, lighting candles at each point. As he finished, the room grew unnaturally cold. Shadows twisted and swirled, creeping closer to the pentagram's edges. Suddenly, a deep, guttural whisper filled the room, You've called us. Terrified, Marcus tried to wipe away the lines, but his hands passed through them as if they weren't real. The candles flickered, and dark shapes began to rise from the center, pulling him into the void. His last scream echoed as the pentagram glowed brighter its power unleashed forever. In a remote village, rumors spread of an ancient wizard who lived deep within the woods. His name was Malker, a man of terrifying power who hadn't been seen in decades. The locals whispered that he had found a way to cheat death, but at a terrible cost. One evening, a young man named Tom ventured into the forest, determined to find the wizard's lair. Desperation drove him, his mother was sick, and no healer could help her. As the moon rose, he stumbled upon a crumbling tower, its stones covered in eerie, glowing runes. Inside, the air was thick with dust and a strange, metallic odor, 
At the top of a spiral staircase, Tom found Malker, thin, withered, and seated on a throne of bones. His eyes glowed with unnatural light. I know why you've come, the wizard rasped. But every spell requires a sacrifice. Desperate, Tom agreed. Malker extended a skeletal hand, and a chill ran through Tom's body as the wizard spoke in an ancient tongue. When Tom returned home, his mother was healed, but something had changed. His reflection no longer cast a shadow. Late that night, he heard Malker's voice whisper in his ear, Your soul is mine. 